Hi, and welcome to Dollars and Making Sense, a weekly program about money, finance, and investing on Radio Northern Beaches and broadcast nationally on the community radio network around Australia. I'm your host, Ray Trevison from OTG Capital. And today we're welcoming to the microphone, Todd O'Neill from Zenium Partners. So look, today what uh, I've asked you to come on the show and talk about is actually something that's very near and dear to my heart, and that's interest rates and property. And I guess it's very near and dear to the hearts of, I guess, millions of Australians, you'd say, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, home loans are probably the largest market in Australia. And, uh, you know, the Australian dream is to own your own home and interest rates and loans are an enormous part of that. Not everyone has the capacity to buy with cash, obviously. So and we're very, very, uh, very um, aware of any change to interest rates. So I guess, as I say, it's near and dear to my heart. I've had a mortgage since I was 27 years old. So uh, you know, I'm bordering on 63 and uh, it's been part of my life. I think it's part of so many people's lives. And today I've asked you on the show, we're going to talk a little bit about fixed rate mortgages. And you you use this reference, a mortgage cliff, because I guess it's no news to anybody out there unless they're living under a rock that we've been going through a series of uh, fairly uh, major uh, rate increases over the past nine months. The RBA has uh, has raised rates, and I guess uh, even the time sensitivity of these shows uh, don't necessarily wane. Even if you're listening to this in six or nine months' time, the impact of interest rates, I think, will still be there. Um, so the RBA said about a year ago that we weren't going to have any interest rate uh, rises for at least another two or three years. They didn't quite get that right, did they? Well, no, and only recently did they um, uh, did they come out and say, well, look, you really shouldn't have taken what we said at face value, and and, and I'm sorry that you took action <laughs> on our advice, uh, <laughs> as important as it is. So, um, yes, we made that comment, but there were some caveats to it. Um, uh, unfortunately, whatever the RBA says is, you know, amplified by media and pushed into people's heads as to what's going to happen and not going to happen. Not, not just amongst, you know, our general population ourselves, but also the economic experts. So in part of the background reading that you provided me, and, and obviously because, I mean, I run a fund myself in fixed interest and interest rates are very near and dear to my heart because it's what I do in my own fund. But uh, the RBA estimates that around 23% of all Australian home loans worth almost half a trillion dollars are fixed rate. Now, that number really did quite surprise me. I, I didn't realise, I guess, with interest rates being so historically low for so long, I don't think people, I think maybe they got lulled into a bit of a false sense of, of security, but 23%, um, that's a big chunk of the market that is in fixed rates, isn't it? It's a big chunk of our market, but, you know, in comparison to, say, the UK and the US, the, you know, their rates are something like 60 to 80% or even more. And that's probably because, you know, certainly in the US, they offer very long-term fixed rates. In Australia, it's it's a much shorter uh, time frame. So, you, you know, you might be able to in the US get a 30 year fixed rate mortgage, whereas here it's more like five years is probably about the, the maximum that we look at. Some are, some are longer, but it's still it's still a large amount. So that means that, say, 80 percent or 77 percent of mortgages have been impacted by rising rates. And for the rest of the, the uh, mortgage population, that is the other 23 percent, they're about to, as they say in the media, uh, fall off a cliff. And that really means uh, that they're going from a very low rate of, say, 2 to 2.5% up to maybe 6% uh, in the next 6 to 12 months. Well, certainly being on a variable rate, I've been on one virtually my entire life. Uh, I've certainly seen my mortgage uh, interest rates uh, go up, and certainly you see it in the, in the actual physical amount of money that's been deducted from uh, my offset account on a, on a monthly basis. It's gone up quite dramatically in the last year. And so uh, before we move on a little bit, I'm just wondering if you can explain to the audience, why is it that Americans can get access to such long-term fixed rate uh, sets of money, whereas we, we don't? Is that lack of competition or is it just a much more competitive market in the US? I think it's just the size of the market and the certainty of the economy. In terms of Australia, a lot of our funding costs are short-term funding costs, and so banks are locked in shorter-term money. And as a result, they're not offering those. At one stage, they were offering up to 10 years. That was some time ago. They seem to have pulled back now, and probably seven is, is about the the maximum. And so, yeah, it's the size of market and access to funding. 
Mm. I, I would have thought, again, just as a side note, given the solidity of the banks here, I would have thought uh, funding sources would have been uh, very keen to be doing business with the uh, the four majors in this country, given uh, the, the profitability of them and uh, I guess the, the AAA rating. Uh, it, it often surprises, I guess, that this uh, what feels like a lack of competition here. Um, I often wonder when the RBA uh, does have their pronouncements on the first Tuesday of the month. The banks are sort of looking at each other going, so what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And and this sort of sideways glancing, although I'm being a bit cynical when I say that. Uh, would you agree, though? Conversations would never be had at the Australian Club. But <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Except for when the one. RBA governor goes in there the day after and has a bit of a lunch uh, tete-a-tete with them. Uh, forget the Chatham House rules, I guess. Yeah, amazing. I think, amazing. I think Ray, just as, a, just as a side note, if you're a small business owner and you have a business loan, you will, in fact, be the first people to recognise that rates are going up before any announcement. And, th and that's because many business loans are pegged to a to an acronym or uh, called BBSW, and that moves on a 30, 60 and 90 day rate basis. It's easily accessible and many business loans will start to move up prior to any home loan rates being announced. So in fact, the small business owners in Australia, for example, uh, have an advantage in terms of being able to predict rate rises, but a disadvantage because their rates <laughs> move up quickly. And before anyone else. Uh, again, uh, again, I speak from personal experience because I have exactly one of those loans and the BBSW is quoted there. And yes, it uh, moves rather fast. Yes, rather fast. I anyway, can tell you that so I can tell you that a year ago, a year ago we had a business client who who was quoted a rate in October and by January they'd gone up by 0.9. 0.9%, so almost a full percent. Yeah. And I think one of the fascinating things, uh, you know, as we, we move into the discussion, into the meat and potatoes of, of today's discussion, we're talking about the real impact dollar-wise uh, when we, we start, uh, you know, flowing these numbers. And I think they roll off public servants and and people that are earning seven figures. And let's not forget the RBA governor does earn close to a million dollars a year for doing his job and the board members are handsomely remunerated. I sometimes wonder in what part of the country their heads are operating at because the flippant lines of saying, oh, look, we really do understand people are hurting. I sometimes wonder if they really do. But let's talk some real numbers today. And again, in the background notes that you've provided me, uh, you've talked about an example, um, but but before we do that, you've said that most of the fixed rate loans taken out during 2020 and 21, uh, when we're in the, the fits of the pandemic, were struck at rates of between 1.75 and 2.25%. So is that the large majority of the 23% that we were talking about at the start of the show? Uh, within that range, up to about 2.5%, if they fixed at that time, yes. Um, mm -hmm. And... Uh, certainly, it was a good time to fix, and uh, and uh, for the for those twenty three percent, about at least half of them are coming off now in the next six months or so, uh, and maybe more, and uh, and they're going to see that shock off. If you say one point nine five or even two percent, we're now moving up to say five point one. You, you can find lower rates, but I'm just quoting some averages: five point one, and even up to you know, 6.3 on just an, a standard owner-occupied variable at some banks. Yeah, I guess one of the factors that, uh, given that uh, my own age, I, I mix with a lot of people my own age and in discussion groups that I, I have with investors that come and chat to us, the older set, I think, uh, I still think are sometimes living in a different reality to what kids are. I mean, when I was going to the mortgage uh, market, it was a very different world and the average uh, salary to buy a house in Sydney was roughly 2.7 to 2.8 times the yearly salary. It's rather different these days, isn't it? Yes, certainly, it's, uh, certainly in, in uh, lending assessment, uh, we're seeing uh, five and six times being the average loan to salary. Anything above six, many lenders do uh, are concerned um, now we have extended loan terms as well you know once upon a time loan terms were at 20 and 25 years and now they're out to 30 and some are talking about you know proposing 40-year mortgages just kind of mortgage for life isn't it 
Well, I, again, I have a lot of family in Europe and I used to travel. I used to live in the UK when I was in the armed forces and many people there I met had mortgages for life and they hand them down. Uh, in, in Italy, for example, the, the, the fact that a mortgage would be passed from, from family to family was not not surprising. They just sort of shrugged their shoulders and, yes, yeah, so what? Uh, because the cost of ownership there was so much higher. Uh, and, and certainly in a city like London, my word, uh, eye-watering um, expense, uh, I think they, they can outshine uh, many of us in that regard. So when we look at the fixed rate marketplace, I sometimes think we've been lulled into a false sense of security. And what we're going to be talking on today's show is also, you know, what are people going to do now that they're facing the reality that they're coming off these fixed rates? And you talk about a mortgage cliff. I mean, is it a cliff, a chasm, or my God, you know, the end of the world? Are we talking about total cataclysm in, in, the, in the mortgage market at this point in time? It's certainly going to be a struggle, that's for sure. And, and, and whilst mortgage cliff is certainly the term that's being used, I feel like it's more of, more of a, you know, waves and a tsunami uh, because uh, <laughs> we're, not, we're not falling. <laughs> we're actually, everything's increasing. And, and just as an example, you know, a, a loan of, say, $650,000 uh, fixed at 2.5%, that, that interest rate is around $2,600 a month. Now, if you shift that up, to say 5.1, we're now talking 3,600, right? An extra thousand dollars a month or $250 a week a family has to has to find, uh, and that's challenging. The uh, the variable rate mortgage holders like yourself have actually benefited somewhat. I know you've been paying more, but you're you've been getting used to these increases on an incremental basis. Your mortgage didn't just jump by $1,000 in one month. It went up 250, 250, 200, and it was, and it's almost like a conditioning exercise. For these people, <laughs> for these people on, on fixed rates, this is a real dilemma. If they have not, you know, if you, as someone with a fixed rate, have not forecast what the rate increases could be and what that means to your budget and started to take some action steps now, that will be an enormous shock. Now, <clears throat> many people, when they first uh, buy a home, whether it's their first or second, will often say, not how much can I, I can afford, but how much can I borrow? And whilst at the start of the lending or assessment process, there is a buffer put in. So if you, if you went in the rates of two and a half, uh, brokers and banks will be assessing you as if you could pay interest rates at 5.5. And they will tell you that's what you're assessed on. And that's correct. But did you take that payment and start making it from the start? No, you probably made the smaller payment at two and a half and then, you know, thought that rates weren't going up and now they're there. So it is a big shock. And for those unprepared or who don't know what to do about it, it, it will be a problem. Now, now it's fine, if you're earning a million dollars, that's fine. But having said that, you may well have leveraged that million dollars up six times as well. So I want to come back to the buffer in just a moment. It's just about time for a short break here. You're on Dollars and Making Sense. I'm Ray Treveson from OTG Capital and I have uh, Todd McNeil uh, with me from Xenium and we're going to be back in just a moment. Hi and thank you for listening to Dollars and Making Sense, a weekly radio program about finance, money and investing on Radio Northern Beaches and nationally on the community radio network around Australia. The views, comments and opinions aired during our program should not be construed or viewed as financial advice. Any commentary is general advice only and does not take into account your objectives, financial situation or needs. You should consider whether the advice is suitable for you and your personal circumstances. If in doubt, you should contact an authorised licensed financial planner. We welcome questions and feedback and you can get in touch with us via our blog, social media channels or email. Please search for Dollars and Making Sense in your favourite podcast platform or check out our blog at otgcapital.com.au forward slash blog. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Dollars and Making Sense. I'm Ray Treveson from OTG Capital and I have with me uh, Todd O'Neill from Xenium Partners, and we are talking about interest rates and the RBA. Now, before we went to a break, Todd, we were talking about 
a buffer. Now, one of the things that I've been saying on our radio show over many, many months, if not years, is that uh, the assessment process is supposed to have a buffer in there. And during the last months, I think, or six or so months of the Morrison government, the RBA also introduced in conjunction with the Treasurer an additional buffer. So they had added to the buffer of two and a half percentage points to three percentage points to try and, I think, build in some resilience into, into mortgage borrowers. Did that have a positive effect? A positive effect? Um, well, it should. what it should do is it should prepare people for those increases. That's the idea of it. Can you afford them? You know, if, if interest rates are three and they go to six, then um, then uh, you know if they go, if they go from three to six, then uh, you should be able to afford that because that's what we've assessed you on, and you've given us your expenses and your income. Now, right. regrettably, uh, what happens is that whilst that assessment is made, many many people, as I said before, will continue to make their payments at the three percent rate, and ideally, in planning, you should be looking at a bit higher and, and making extra payments if you can. But it certainly prevents people, it's it's designed to prevent people from taking out loans that cannot afford it if interest rates go up. Right. And, and I, I guess with all the best planning and you, you, legislators, I think, are always caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. They're trying to, I think, be responsible, but also say to business, we want people to be out there making the economy work and, and having money turn over. And I... I I sometimes I, I'm not a big fan of Josh Frydenberg, but I think he was, I think, trying his best in in fairly difficult circumstances to, I think, say to the marketplace, look, go out there and do what you need to do, but still be responsible. And the banks were being asked, you know, continue to lend responsibly. Now, given that we are facing these mortgage cliffs, I still see banks out there marketing to their to their delight. I, I still get confused sometimes. I, I watch some ads and at the end of it, it's got a bank logo and I'm still scratching my head going, I have no idea what that was about, but it's still a good feel, you know, a feely goody type of, of ad. So the banks are still pretty keen for our business, aren't they? Absolutely, they are. And in fact, they're in the marketplace right now, encouraging people to refinance by offering them cashbacks of, you know, four thousand dollars. So that, that um, hasn't gone past my notice. I must admit, not that four thousand dollars in a in a, in a Sydney environment is is all that uh, big. But uh, again, even the regions and Brisbane and other markets have gone up quite substantially. So four grand, um, I, I scratch my head and go, wow, that that might be one month's worth of payments, isn't it? It might be. It's certainly it's certainly an incentive for people to look and to be assessed. And if there's a financial reason for refinancing, uh, and that is, well, I'm paying 6.1 and I can get 5.5 somewhere else and they give me $4,000, then you know, it's a marketing ploy, if you like, that does work. Now, there's a difference between marketing and credit assessment, obviously. So the marketing gets <laughs> people in the door and then, and then they're assessed as to whether or not they can afford the loan that they're going to get $4,000 for. But many, for, for many families, they would not see that as anything more than, well, I'm already making my payments. Why won't I just go and get four grand? Fair enough. Fair enough. But I think one of the fact factors that I always say to people, I mean, I don't uh, do financial advice anymore. I used to. Uh, but when I get asked at a barbecue, you know, should I or should I not change? I, I have no doubt that if you are able to justify from an interest rate perspective, a, a swap of loans. But uh, Todd, maybe you might tell the listeners, we're still talking about change out costs, aren't we? We're still talking about stamping. We're still talking about establishment fees. I mean, many lenders still have line fees, don't they? You know, just simply to, to stand the loan up. Look, line fees are probably something on the business side. On the home loan side, it's very, very competitive. So there are many, many banks that will offer, you know, no application fees, et cetera. You still have government fees if you're transferring your mortgage for the release of your mortgage, the registration, you know, they're $140 each. Um, you've still got some costs there. And you've got time and effort in putting into the application. Whether you're working with a broker like us or, or you're working with a bank directly, you still have to take the time out to do it. So there needs to be a benefit. It needs to be not just short term, but long term. Um, should you go and refinance if it's 0.15% difference? 
sometimes not. <laughs> what if that bank you're going to puts their rates up by 25 points next time instead of the 15 they put it last time with the RBA? It happens, right? So there has to be a long-term financial benefit, not just the $4,000 today. See, and again, I, I wonder about the cynicism in the marketplace because with the these nine sets of interest rate rises, the Guardian recently uh, promoted uh, an article, uh, produced an article, sorry, uh, about the um, delivery of interest rates and the flow through. And they had this nice graph of each uh, of the RBA increases and then red lights and green lights as to whether the full rate were passed on uh, from a cost perspective. And, and again, the retirees that are out there and people that have cash deposits about how quickly their uh, cash deposit rates went up. And no surprises that uh, the banks, again, I feel like you know, when they're talking about marketing, they're not doing themselves any favours because of the lag of passing on the benefit uh, at the flip side. I mean, it's, it, they keep on saying it's the cost of money, but you know, these banks are still announcing some fairly hefty record profits, aren't they? Billions and billions of dollars. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> on the one side, that says that our banking system is stable and profitable, and you know, and we, and we should be okay as an economy. But uh, if you're a homeowner and you know your your mother and father are relying on interest uh, for their income from their investments, and your uh, rate goes up uh, this week and theirs goes up a month later. And as a comparison, you know, if you're around the dinner table having a chat about what's happening, you're now paying increasing costs immediately. And interestingly enough, when rates come down, they seem to pass them on later. Yes, and and this Guardian article, um, I might even put that on my on, on the on the blog. It it simply presents the facts. I, I, they don't even make commentary, to be honest, Todd. They simply say, here it is, green light, red light. Green is good, red's bad, and it's a wash with red because, you know, as you rightly say, when the rates go up, the, those of us having to pay feel the effect almost immediately. But for those that are actually trying to earn interest and live off what's referred to as passive income, uh, that takes time to come through. And and yet here we stand, the, the full impact of nine months worth of, of rate increases has not fully flowed through to customer deposits. and. Uh, again, I, I don't care how much marketing they do. People out there in consumer land get rather cynical, and um, I, I, I can't sit there and say other than you know banks, you've got yourselves to blame. I mean, I, I, I personally, I mean, tell me otherwise. Uh, is it just a marketing exercise? They keep on making these excuses, but I, I can't see a valid reason why they keep holding off paying depositors uh, the the same increases that they they make mortgage uh, purchases pay pay more. I, I I'm scratching my head. It's a business decision. I mean, if you you know if you if you if you've got billions and billions of dollars uh, of lending and you flip the rates up tomorrow, you can you can model the spreadsheet. It's pretty easy. How much extra cash will we bring in in that 17 days before we before we increase our our savings rates and does anybody care about the savings rates anyway because you know channel 9 or channel 10 or whatever is not reporting on those necessarily so they're really worried about the mortgage yes and and hence my cynicism <laughs> there we go so look one of the the one of the questions that i certainly wanted to ask you and 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 you know we could spend another show on this alone but so for those out there listening to this show today if they wanted to refinance uh, and get a better rate, what do they do? What's the first step? I think the first step is is having a look at, okay, what is my interest rate and what is my actual dollar payment? And then uh, and then talking to either your broker, the broker that arranged your loan, or the bank if you went directly, and talking to them about what options do I have about decreasing this? And those options might simply be that the bank gives you a discount. They may give you a discount if they don't want to lose you as a client. Uh, from a broking perspective, if, if it makes sense, then your broker will have a look at that and go back to the bank themselves and ask them for a pricing, a, a repricing or a discount. Um, and if that doesn't work, then there's other options you can look at and, and a broker will look around and try and find you, you know, a much better rate for your home loan. Now, you may think, well, a bank, why would they give me a discount? Well, because it's easier to keep a client than to get a new one. They've got to pay $4,000 for the new one, right? So. Uh, Call your bank, ask them what are the ways I can get an interest rate discount. They may say, well, we can't do anything. 
okay, then you can say to them, well, I've looked at, say, you know, a, a number of other banks, they, they're a half a percent less than you are. What can you do? If that doesn't work, then you'll find that uh, applying for another bank and getting a uh, what's called a discharge form, that is telling the bank that I'm leaving you, will trigger their retention teams to get into action and call you and say, why are you leaving? And you'll say, well, you didn't give me a discount and they will most likely match the rate or give you a discount <laughs> as much as they can because now you're But leaving. hang on, we've had that discussion. You said no first, but now that you find that I'm walking out the door, hang on, wait, 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 wait. Well, unfortunately, there's a tendency with some of these financial services institutions to not do anything until people spring. Because if we don't talk to you and we just let it lie, we get more interest, right? And if you're going to leave, well, maybe you can't leave. Maybe it's hard. And that's what that's what mortgage prisoners are. So that's another term that's being used. And that is... Wow, I, I've not uh, heard that one before, mortgage prisoners. Yeah, so a mortgage prisoner is, uh, I my loan's at 2.5%. I've got my loan at 2%. It's now at 6%. I want to refinance. I need to get a cheaper rate. There's 55 out there. There's five. Well, guess what? Now that rates are at 55 my assessment rate is eight and a half, whereas previously it was five and a half, right? So I've got the same income. My wages really haven't gone up. I've got the same expenses. But now I can't afford to refinance because the assessment rate I'm being assessed on for my loan has increased significantly with the interest rates. So now I'm stuck paying the 6.3% because no one else will take me. So the first thing is, See if you can get a discount. The other thing is, can you change your loan type? Is there a way? Some people have taken loans, for example, with an offset. That's great if you've got money in offset. But what you'll find is that some banks will charge you a package fee or an extra interest rate. Money be 0 0.1, 0 0.2 on your loan because you have an offset. Now, if you can't afford your mortgage payments, there's not much point having an offset because you probably don't have any savings, right? Unless you've got some tax mm. benefits that I don't know about. But, you know, there are features of on loans that are charged for, whether it's a package fee or an extra interest rate, look for those different ways that you can reduce or change whatever you can do to, to get that rate down. Just get the best rate that you can in the market that you're you know, assessed as being able to afford. But definitely look at it and definitely ask. And keep asking. Okay. Great advice, Todd. And we're just about out of time today. Look, I think you've hit on some really salient points. And given the fact that this is something that's affecting, and let me say again, 23% of all Australian loans today, this is not something that's going to go away anytime soon. So I think it's going to be at the dinner table in discussions quite a lot. So Todd O'Neill from Xenium, I'd like to thank you for being on the show. And uh, I, I guess until next time, I'd like to have you back because I think there's some really good points that we can we can certainly uh, have a chat. So in wrapping up, thank you for listening to Dollars and Making Sense, a weekly program about finance, money and investing. We welcome questions and feedback and you can get in touch with us via our blog, social media channels, et cetera, et cetera. And until next week, thank you, Todd. Thank you, Ray. And until then, listeners, adios.